हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर फोर ऑन रेसिड इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ रियल इंटीग्रल्स इन लेक्चर नंबर वन टू थ्री वी हैव डिस्कस मेथड ऑफ इवेल्युएटिंग दिस रियल इंटीग्रल्स बाय कोशिश रेसिड थियोरम एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड टू एग्जांपल्स ऑन हाउ टू इवेल्युएट इम प्रॉपर इंटीग्रल्स यूजिंग रेसिड थियोरम टूडे ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन मोर एग्जाम्पल ऑन द सेम मैथड फॉर द मैथड ऑफ दिस real integration of real integrals i suggest you to watch lecture number 1 if you are if you have not watched previous lectures so the method is discussed in lecture number 1 and we are going to evaluate this improper integral using this rescued theorem so let us see what is asked here using rescued theorem or using rescued is we are asked to find out cosy principal value of the improper integral माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू इन्फिनिटी एक्स ओवर एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वन टाइम्स एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस टू एक्स प्लस टू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वॉट इज मीनिंग ऑफ कोसी प्रिंसिपल वैल्यू इन लेक्चर नंबर वन एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस दैट इफ अवर फंक्शन इज ए रेशनल फंक्शन सपोज एफ एक्स इज ए रेशनल फंक्शन दैट इज डिविजन ऑफ टू पोली नंबर्स से एफ एक्स इज p by q where p and q are polynomials in x and if this qx is non zero for all x and degree of qx is strictly greater than 1 plus degree of p then cosy principal value of this improper integral is given by 2 pi i times sum of residues sum of residues of the complex function f of z at the poles of f of z in upper half plane so i have discussed all these details in lecture number 1 so if you have not seen that lecture you must watch that lecture to understand the method of this uh, evaluation of improper integrals by rescued theorem the same problem can be asked in another notation here we have used the notation for cosy principal value cosy principal value is denoted by this notation so we have to find out cosy principal value using cosy's residue theorem also uh, we know that if degree of denominator is at least two larger than the degree of numerator and if this denominator is non zero for every x on the real axis then this improper integral is convergent and its cosy principal value and its value of integral will be same so the value of this improper integral will be equal to its cosy principal value if this improper integral is convergent so sometimes they can ask you to find out value of this improper integral also and because here degree of denominator is at least two larger than the degree of numerator this improper integral is convergent so the value of this improper integral will be equal to its cosy principal value so now first we denote this function by fx suppose we consider fx equal to x divided by x square plus 1 times x square plus 2x plus 2 and if we compare with uh, this px by qx it is a rational function so suppose it is denoted by px by qx then this is going to be px uh, qx and this is x so it is clear that qx is non zero for every x on the real axis because we know that x square plus 1 is always non zero this is also going to be non zero x square plus 2x plus 2 will be will never be zero for any x if we solve this equation there will not be any real value of x 
for which this equation is satisfied so this equation has no real root that therefore this this is always non zero for every x belongs to r this is also non zero for every x belongs to r and degree of qx is degree of this plus degree of this that is 2 plus 2 4 so here degree of q is 4 and degree of px is 1 so it is strictly greater than 1 plus degree of p or 1 plus 1 that is 2 so that condition is satisfied here now uh, in the next step we have to consider corresponding complex function so for that we replace x by z in in f of x so we consider f of z equal to z divided by z square plus 1 times z square plus 2z plus 2 okay, in this function we replace x by z and here instead of polynomial in x we have polynomials in z so now we have to find out zeros of this polynomial to find out poles of f of z we have to find out zeros of this function qz because f of z is a rational function so the poles of f of z are nothing but zeros of this denominator polynomial which is qz so the values of z for which qz will be equal to 0 we are interested in those values so now we try to solve this equation qz equal to 0 this is possible if z square plus 1 is 0 or z square plus 2z plus 2 equal to 0 now we solve this to z square plus 1 is 0 can be written as z square equal to minus 1 and as we know minus 1 is i square so this gives me z equal to plus or minus i and uh, this i can rewrite as z square plus 2z 1 plus 1 i have rewritten 2 as 1 plus 1 now this part is nothing but square of z plus 1 and we consider this 1 on the right hand side so we have minus 1 that we rewrite as i square therefore z plus 1 whole square is i square so therefore z plus 1 is plus or minus i so therefore z equal to minus 1 plus or minus i so these are the two complex uh, roots and these are also complex roots so therefore uh, these are the values of z for which qz becomes 0 that is denominator f of denominator of this function f of z becomes 0 at those points and because f of z is a rational function these points are nothing but poles of f of z or we can say that f of z has poles at z equal to plus or minus i that is i comma minus i and here we have two possible roots one is minus one plus i and minus one minus i now among these poles we are interested in those poles which are in the upper half plane only suppose this distance is one this is minus one this is one and this is minus one so we have this is x axis y axis so z equal to i is here z equal to minus i will be here now z is minus 1 plus i that means here minus 1 plus i and minus 1 minus i that means here so now we can see that these two poles minus 1 plus i and i are in upper half plane minus 1 plus i and i and these two are in the lower half plane minus i and minus 1 minus i and we are interested in the poles of f of z in upper half plane only so we will not consider these two poles
okay we will consider only uh, this poles in the upper half plane so f of z or we can write that z equal to minus i and z equal to minus 1 minus i are in lower half plane these two poles are in lower half plane so they are not of our interest so now we will concentrate on these two poles z equal to i and z equal to minus 1 plus i so we can again write that f of z has poles at z equal to i and z equal to minus 1 plus i in upper half plane in upper half so now in the next step we will find out residues of f of z at these two poles so first we try to find out residue of f of z at z equal to i so for that we try to rewrite our function f of z okay, so before that uh, we first uh, okay fine first we write f of z f of z is z divided by z square plus 1 z square plus 2 z plus 2 now we are interested at z equal to i so for that uh, we can rewrite this z square plus 1 as z square minus minus 1 and this minus 1 is nothing but i square so we can rewrite z square plus 1 as a product of two factors z plus i and z minus i and we keep other things as it is z plus i z minus i we keep all these things as it is now we are interested in the pole at z equal to i so for that uh, we keep z minus i in the denominator and we write all other remaining things in the numerator so z divided by z plus i z square plus 2z plus 2 and we consider numerator as function of z say phi of z so where phi of z is nothing but z divided by z plus i times z square plus 2z plus 2 so this function phi of z is clearly analytic at z equal to i okay, because it is a rational function and this denominator is non-zero at z equal to i and uh, we have to check what is value of phi at z equal to i so for that we put z equal to i in phi of z so here we write i here z equal to i so z plus i that is i plus i will become 2i then z square i square 2z that is 2i plus 2 so here i will cancel out and uh, we are having 1 divided by 2 times i square is minus 1 plus 2i plus 2 so this again can be rewritten as here 2 minus 1 that is 1 plus 2i and uh, this uh, we can again simplify we multiply and divide by conjugate of 1 plus 2i which is 1 minus 2i so we multiply and divide by 1 minus 2i so this is 1 minus 2i divided by 1 square minus 2i square that is 4 times i square so this is equal to 1 minus 2i 2 times 1 minus i square is minus 1 so minus minus plus and this is going to be 1 minus 2i divided by 2 into 5 
that is 1 minus 2i divided by 10 and this is non-zero so f of z is rewritten as phi of z over z minus i or z minus i to the power 1 where this function phi of z is analytic at z equal to i and value of function phi at z equal to i is non-zero so therefore f of z has a pole of order 1 at z equal to i f of z has a pole of order 1 at z equal to i and residue of f of z at z equal to i will be equal to value of function phi at z equal to i and which we have obtained as 1 minus 2i divided by 10 which we denote by say b1 so we have obtained residue of f of z at z equal to i now we find out residue of f of z at z equal to minus 1 plus i in the same way so again we rewrite our function f of z our function is z divided by z square plus 1 times z square plus 2z plus 2 now solution of this equation z square plus 2z plus 2 equal to 0 was minus 1 plus or minus i so we can rewrite z square plus 2z plus 2 as here we have two values of z which satisfy this equation minus 1 plus i and minus 1 minus i so we can rewrite this as z minus first solution which is minus 1 plus i into z minus second solution which is minus 1 minus i so we replace this z square plus 2z plus 2 by these two linear factors we keep z square plus 1 as it is and we write z square plus 2z plus 2 as z minus minus 1 plus i into z minus minus 1 minus i because these two are roots of z square plus 2z plus 2 now we are interested at z equal to minus 1 plus i so we will keep this factor in the denominator and other things will be written in the numerator so we keep this here z minus minus 1 plus i and we rewrite all other things in this way in the numerator z divided by z square plus 1 and this we can simplify by taking negative sign inside the bracket we will have z plus 1 plus i so this is our function phi of z in this case and we keep this as it is z minus minus 1 plus i where phi of z is z divided by z square plus 1 times z plus 1 plus i and this function is non-zero at z equal to minus 1 plus i and because it is a rational function and it is non-zero its denominator is non-zero at z equal to minus 1 plus i this is analytic at z equal to minus 1 plus i and uh, we have to find out value of this function at z equal to minus 1 plus i so we substitute z equal to minus 1 plus i everywhere in phi of z so here we have z square plus 1 that is minus 1 plus i whole square plus 1 and here minus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i we put z equal to minus 1 plus i now we try to simplify this 
we keep this as it is here we take square of minus 1 plus i that is minus 1 square minus 2 i plus i square and plus 1 here we can see this 1 will cancel out and we have 2 i now this is going to be minus 1 plus i here i square is minus 1 that will cancel out with this and we are left with 1 minus 2i into 2i now we uh, first write 1 over 2i here and uh, here we have minus 1 plus i 1 minus 2i and conjugate of 1 minus 2i is 1 plus 2i so we multiply and divide by 1 plus 2i so this is as it is 1 over 2i here 1 minus 2i into 1 plus 2i is going to be 1 minus 4i square and here we can use the formula for product of two complex numbers real part into real part that is minus 1 into minus 1 okay, we can write one more step minus imaginary part into imaginary part that is 1 into 2 plus i times real part into imaginary part that is minus 1 into 2 plus imaginary part into imaginary part that is 1 into 1 so this is now 1 over 2i 1 minus 4 times i square is minus 1 this is minus 1 minus 2 that is minus 3 plus i this is going to be 2 minus 2 plus 1 that is minus 1 now here 1 over i can be replaced by minus i and here we have 1 plus 4 and uh, here this is going to be minus 3 minus i now uh, we take this negative sign inside this bracket or we can multiply directly by minus i so minus i into minus 3 that is going to be 3 i and minus minus plus i into i that is i square so here i am multiplying minus i with minus 3 minus i so minus i into minus 3 negative negative positive 3 into i then minus i into minus i negative negative positive i into i is i square divided by 5 so this is now 3i minus 1 divided by 10 i square is minus 1 and this is non-zero so we have obtained that this f of z is rewritten as okay, here left hand side is f of z so f of z is rewritten as phi of z over z minus minus 1 plus i where phi of z is analytic at z equal to minus 1 plus i and value of phi at minus 1 plus i is non-zero so therefore uh, we can say that f of z has a simple pole or pole of order 1 at z equal to minus 1 plus i and residue of f of z at z equal to minus 1 plus i will be equal to value of function phi at z equal to minus 1 plus i or we can write one more step here this is going to be value of phi at minus 1 plus i which we have obtained as 3i minus 1 divided by 10 which we denote by b2 so we have obtained residues at both the poles in the upper half plane so now we can apply residue theorem now by residue theorem we are interested in the principal value so principal value of function fx dx from minus infinity to infinity equal to 2 pi i times sum of residues of f of z at poles in the upper half plane 
residues are denoted by b1 and b2 so now we substitute values of b1 and b2 so residue at z equal to i was 1 minus 2i divided by 10 so that we substitute here 1 minus 2i divided by 10 plus b2 is 3i minus 1 divided by 10 so this we can simplify this is if we take lcm we have 1 minus 2i plus 3i minus 1 here we can cancel out this 2 so we have pi i divided by 5 and this is going to be 3i minus 2i that is i 1 will cancel out so we have pi by 5 into i square and i square is minus 1 so that is minus pi divided by 5 so therefore principal value of improper integral minus infinity to infinity uh, now we substitute fx fx is x over x square plus 1 x square plus 2x plus 2 is nothing but minus pi divided by 5 by Cauchy's residue theorem and because this improper integral is convergent value of this improper integral is also going to be minus pi by 5 but in this example we are asked to find out Cauchy principle value of this improper integral therefore uh, we write up to this okay, so in this way we can apply Cauchy's residue theorem to obtain Cauchy principle value of improper integral so this is all about this session i hope you like it thank you very much